yet another handheld installment. That's right, today, I'm counting down my top 10 favorite Mario Party Star Rush minigames. Now, if you remember what I said in my Mario Party Island Tour minigame countdown video, you'd think that one's my favorite handheld installment, but it's not. I just said that so you wouldn't expect this video. That's right, Star Rush is my favorite handheld installment. This is because it has many awesome modes, fun use of amiibo, and most of all, a bunch of fun and epic minigames, which is the main reason we're here. Concept, yada yada yada, my opinion, yada yada yada, speaking for myself only, yada yada yada, and also, I will not be counting any coin or Bowser Gauntlet minigames, since they're mode exclusive. Alright, enough of that crap, let's party! Kicking off this list is Acorn Ucopia. Each player is carrying a basket with five acorns, walking through a field full of Goombrats. These Goombrats will charge toward any player they spot, and if the player fails to dodge it, he or she will drop an acorn, and any player that drops all five acorns loses. On the other hand, the player to make it to the end of the path with the most acorns remaining wins. This minigame is pretty thrilling, since there are Goombrats everywhere, meaning that if players want to avoid them, they must be very cautious. Also, it's kind of funny seeing the Goombrats charge around like that. I'm not quite sure why, but the moral here is that Acorn Ucopia is my my 10th favorite minigame. Anyone got a time-killing epilogue for me? Ninth place is Haunted Hallways. Players are running inside a mansion and must search each room until they find the one with the podium. The first player to reach said room wins. However, there's no way of knowing which room is the correct one, so all they can do is search around until they find it. Wait, I already said that. Anyway, some of the rooms contain booze, which players must avoid unless they want to be carried back to the start. But that's all there really is, there aren't any other hazards. While this minigame is mostly luck-based, I still like it because of the concept, which is epic, and also how its unpredictability makes it really thrilling. I know this isn't that much, but you know, some minigames are just too awesome for words, blah blah blah. Anyway, Haunted Hallways haunts all competition for 9th place. Eighth place is Jump to Conclusion. Players are jumping upstairs, with Piranha Creepers resting on some of them. To avoid the Creepers, players must jump two steps over them. Now you may be thinking, DON'T YOU ALWAYS JUMP TWO STEPS? And the answer to that is no, you don't. Players must also jump one step, so as to avoid making contact with an incoming Creeper. The first player to jump all the steps and arrive to the top platform wins. I like this minigame because it's nice and simple, and also forces the players to pay attention, since doing nothing but jumping two steps could cost the win. Also, it's at least a bit thrilling, since there's no way of knowing whether an upcoming step is dangerous or not. So, with that, jumps conclusion, jumps to no conclusions, and gathers all evidence for 8th place. Seventh place is Boss Battle, Bowser's Shocking Slip-Up. Players are running on a circuit track around Bowser and must attack him by hitting blocks. However, it's not quite as simple as that. Players must time the hits well to land on a lightning bolt. Doing so will cause Bowser damage. However, there's another possible outcome, Banana Peels. They land on the track and become a hazard to players, when someone hits a block at the wrong time. They're a hazard because they take one point from anyone that slips over them. Speaking of losing points, Bowser can cause the same thing by shooting fireballs towards the players. Wait, I forgot to mention that players will get one point for each lightning bolt they score, and the player with the most points when Bowser is defeated wins. I also forgot to mention that once Bowser is down to half health, he'll up his game. This boss battle is very fun, epic, and that's it. Not at all shockingly, Bowser's shocking slip-up slips into 7th place. Sixth place is another boss battle, Mega Goomba's Bad Dream. All players are in a field with several Goombas and one giant, or rather, Mega Goomba, who is sleeping around several apples. What players must do is run over to Mega Goomba and put the apples in their basket, up to three at a time, although the more apples they carry at once, the slower they move around. Then carry them back to the bigger basket. Doing so gives a player one point for each apple. However, like in Acorn Ucopia, the Goombas will chase any player they spot around and take one point if contact is made. But wait, it gets worse. Once the basket is half filled, Mega Goomba will wake up and begin guarding the apples by lunging forward and taking one point from any player that contact is made with. 
Once 50 apples are put in the big basket, Mega Goomba will be defeated, and the player with the most points when this happens wins. This minigame is fun and thrilling, and the concept is pretty good. With that, Mega Goomba's Bad Dream doesn't even need to dream of 6th place. Fifth place is yet another boss battle, Bowser Jr.'s Pound for Pound. Each player is inside an arena with Bowser Jr. and his clown car, and must cause him damage by ground pounding switches. Don't ask me how it works, no one really knows. Players will get one point for each blue switch, and two for each orange one. Once all switches are hit once, Bowser Jr. will be down to half of his health, up his game, and the switches will reset. After each switch is hit two times, Bowser Jr. will be defeated, and of course, the player with the most points wins. I didn't forget to say that Bowser Jr. will defend himself by attacking the players and taking one point from each one he does so successfully. I just assumed you already knew that. Anyway, this minigame is fun, epic, and thrilling, since Bowser Jr.'s attacks can be a bit hard to avoid, and they just look pretty cool. Also, I like its concept even though it doesn't make much sense. With all that, Bowser Jr.'s pound for pound, pound into fifth place. Sorry, four boss battles in a row, placing fourth is King bob Boom Data. Players are on a platform facing King bob who will stomp the ground and make bombs fall onto said platform. Players must then pick the bombs up and put them in the cannons to shoot them back at the king. Doing so causes him damage and gives one point to the player responsible. King bob himself doesn't really fight back, rather he depends on the bombs to fight back, since if left alone for too long, he'll explode and take a point from any players too close to it. I'm sure you already know that, since this is a boss battle, King bob will eventually hit half health, and once he does, he'll start throwing bigger bombs, which cause him more damage and give players more points. And also take more points from players they explode near. Again, this minigame is fun, epic, and thrilling with an awesome concept. This is everything a good minigame should have, which is why King Bob's Boom Day Top booms into fourth place easily. Finally, a break from all the boss battles. Third place goes to Piece of Cake. Players are given 10 seconds to memorize the contents of a cake, and once time is up, they'll be shown a slice of said cake, and must cut a slice identical to that of... the slice. Doing so gives a player 1 point, and the player with the most points after 3 rounds wins. Yes, this means that this minigame can't have more than one winner at a time. I like Piece of Cake because... Well, if you've been following my channel for a long time, you probably know why. Because since I have a very good memory, I love minigames to test... my memory. The concepts may not be that special, and it's not really thrilling or epic or anything, I just find it really fun and somewhat challenging. Deciding was a piece of cake. Piece of cake is easily my third favorite Mario Party Star Rush minigame of all time. Back to the boss battles. Ugh. Running up is Mega Monty Moles in the hole. There are seven mole holes, and Mega Monty Mole, along with a few decoys, will pop out of said holes. What players must do is wait for this to happen, find the real Monty Mole, and then repeatedly hit him with a hammer. Each hit gives one point. You know, like whack-a-mole? Anyway, as for the decoys, a player to hit a decoy will lose one point. As boss battles go, Mega Monty Mole will eventually lose half of his health, and once he does, more decoys will start to appear, making it just a bit harder. Wanna hear something equally obvious? When Mega Monty Mole's defeated, the player with the most points wins. What can I say? When I was a kid, I loved whack-a-mole, and this minigame is pretty much a more extreme version of it. Also, it's thrilling and fun, with a pretty clever concept, even if it is unoriginal. Mega Monty Mole's in the hole, not just in the hole, it's also second place. Honorable Mention Party! Yeah! Number 15 is Wheelin' and Wigglin'. Players are riding Wiggler trains and must charge toward their opponents to knock their segments off. The player with the most segments still intact when time is up wins. This minigame is fun and thrilling with a decent concept. Number 14 is Roller Revenge. Players are running on a platform, which is surrounded by several spikes who will throw spike rollers onto it. Players have three lives and must avoid said rollers, and the winner is the player with the most lives remaining when time is up, or the last one standing. This one is, again, fun and thrilling, but with a better concept. Number 13 is Lava Labyrinth. Players are running through a maze over lava and must make their way to treasure chests. 
while avoiding several melty monsters. The first player to reach the biggest chest wins. This minigame is fun, epic, and thrilling, and, again, with a decent concept. Number 12 is Bowser's Space Race. All players are riding saucers with bombs, and must carry the bombs over to Bowser and cause him damage while avoiding his counterattacks. Doing so gives players one point, or three, if they get the Mega Mushroom, and the player with the most points when Bowser's defeated wins. Again, this one is fun, thrilling, and epic with an awesome concept. Last but not least, number 11 is Fruit Parade. Several Shy Guys will walk, or rather, dance across a room, carrying platters with different fruits on them. The players must keep track of the fruits, since after all the Shy Guys pass, they'll be asked how many of one random fruit there were. Any player to guess the correct amount, or rather, come the closest, is victorious. As I've said already, I love games to test my memory, and also ones where players use the touchscreen to take notes. Finally, number one. It's yet another boss battle, and that's all I can think of for hints. It's none other than Petey Piranha Shell Smackdown. Players must attack Petey by throwing Koopa shells at him. Doing so gives one point. However, Petey does fight back by jumping around and releasing shock waves, both of which take points from players they hit. He also spins around, deflecting shells that are thrown at him, and that can also take points from players if the shells hit them. Also, Wait, do I even need to say it? Once half of Petey's health is gone, his attacks will become more frequent and devastating, and also, bigger shells will start to appear, which grants, and if deflected, take 3 points, but also make the holder move around slower. Once Petey is defeated, the player with the most points is victorious. Duh. This minigame has it all. Fun, epic, thrilling, exhilarating gameplay, and a good concept. Not great, but, you know, concept is not the only thing that matters. Anyway, PD Piranha Shell Smackdown has everything a good minigame should, which is why it's easily my number one favorite Mario Party Star Rush minigame of all time. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite Mario Party Star Rush minigames of all time. For more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, please check out my social media, all links are in the description. See you next time, Mikoro Gliscor 472, out.